Hey guys, it's Rob here. Today, we start the three-week journey of me covering the biggest area I've ever covered in any of these history videos, Houston, Texas. While this area isn't as significant in terms of the history of Shoba's Pizza Place or Chuck E. Cheese as other places, such as Dallas, this area has a lot of different locations to it, with a variety of stage types that we'll be going over. To be exact, there are nine Cheesipedia articles that exist of just Houston locations. While there are more locations, they have very little info on them, or none at all, so I'll be focusing on covering these nine locations on the wiki, with extras that I may find along the way. A lot of these are three-stage locations, but there are some locations that were originally Chuck E. Cheese locations, so there's stuff there as well. Today, I'll be going over the three oldest locations in Houston. Before we begin, I want to thank GrittyMaster96, Hayden and Connor, and ZZN2CZZ for requesting this area. As usual, I've gathered information from multiple different sources, which I'll be linking in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, as we'll be covering the next three locations next week. Anyways, let's get into the history of Shoba's Pizza Place and Chuck E. Cheese in Houston, Texas, Part 1. The 2220 FM 1960 location, which I'll call the 1960 location, opened on June 25, 1981 as a Shoba's Pizza Place. This was the first Shoba's Pizza to open in Houston. There's not a lot on this location, but there is a photo we can look at. The photo in question is a picture of stage left, presumably from the early to mid 80s as Smitty Super Surface Station is still present. Billy Bob looks to be in good shape cosmetically here, which is to be expected from the time. There's also a bunch of kids surrounding him, which is interesting. It makes me wonder if the interactive Billy Bob feature was being used here due to that. Other than that, we also know this location got the Shoba's Pizza Campground upgrade sometime in the late 1980s. Beginning in 1989, due to a fallout between Creative Engineering and Shoba's Pizza Time Inc., concept unification occurred, in which every Shoba's Pizza place would convert the Rock of Fire Explosion Ban into Munch's Make Believe Ban. The 1960 location would be one of the vast majority of locations to undergo this change, receiving it between 1991 and 1992. Footage from early 1999 shows off this location, mainly the showroom. We see every animatronic except for Chuck, which is because a live show is happening in this footage. Condition-wise, the animatronics don't look too good. I know live shows don't have great programming in the first place, but you can tell, mainly with Helen, that there are movements not working, with Helen specifically not moving much whatsoever. We can see based on the small can and the box that both Munch Jr. and Pizza Can were present during this time. Unfortunately, we don't know what Chuck looked like during this time, seeing as this stage is never shown with the curtains open. We get to see the Chuck walk around during this time as well, wearing a tracksuit with a derby and also no tooth, which was likely intentional as Chucky walkarounds during this time did that, apparently. Finally, we see that during this time that the location had received a major 90s remodel meaning that this location received it sometime in the 90s, which would have changed the exterior to this, replaced older decor for newer decor, and added the sky tubes. The only other thing we have from this time is this picture of a worker posing with a munched walkaround outside of this location. I have no clue if this munched walkaround belonged to this location or not, though. Throughout most of the 2000s, not much happened to this location. In fact, we don't have any pictures of the store up until June of 2007, where we get a picture of the showroom area with some noticeable changes from the 1999 footage. Firstly, all the characters now have plastic masks, and Chuck has his cool Chuck attire on with the cap. Also, both Munch Jr. and Pizza Cam had been removed by this time, which was typical of locations to do. We also get to see part of one of the 90s decor shelves with a tuxedo Chuck statue on it. We also have a screenshot from Google Maps that shows off the location's 90s exterior, albeit very blurry as this was taken in June of 2008, when the photo quality of the captures wasn't too good. Between 2009 and 2010, this location received the 2005 update to the 2003 Cool Chuck reconfiguration, which redid the exterior to one with an Adventure Chuck logo, replaced older decor for newer decor, painted some walls to purple, and downsized the back of the store a bit. The biggest change came from the removal of the three-stage, stage and all, and replacing it with a 16-movement Studio C beta. We don't know what happened to the three-stage animatronics, though if I had to guess, they were probably either destroyed or sent to another location for spare parts. There's not much to go over after this point, though a photo from 2014 shows us that the Studio C beta originally had Cool Chuck attire on their Chuck. I can't tell what pants he has on, though. There really isn't much footage of this location after they got a Studio C beta, but the latest footage I could find of the stage, from the day before it closed, shows that it worked well, though Chuck is missing his teeth for some reason. He also has full Rockstar attire on at this point, which makes sense. On August 26th, 2018, 
the location closed as the area had become largely abandoned and sketchy. The building was abandoned and it still is abandoned to this day. As for what happened to the pseudo seabot, we have no clue. I'm guessing it was probably destroyed though. As of January 2024, the location remains this way. Honestly, this location is similar to the one we covered last week, Evansville, with the only differences being that this location removed the three stage a few years later than Evansville, and also got replaced with a beta stage instead of a kappa. Nick 760 Antoine Drive location, which I'll be calling the Antoine location, opened on July 15th, 1981 as the Showbiz Pizza Place. In terms of things from the Showbiz days, there's not really anything. All we know is that between 1989 and 1990, this location got the 1988 remodel, where they received the checkered patterns on the walls, the blue and white awnings above the salad bar, oil paintings, and removed some of the older showbiz decor. This included the stage receiving the showbiz pizza campground upgrade. Antoine received concept unification sometime in 1991, converting the characters to Munch's make-believe band. This location also received a minor remodel in 1993 and replaced the oil paintings with the record posters. This location also received the major 90s remodel in the late 90s, removing older decor for newer decor, with the exception of the record posters, and also replacing the ball pit with sky tubes. Nothing much happened in the first half of the 2000s, though we know that all the characters got plastic masks and that much Junior and Pizza Cam seem to have been removed at some point, likely during the 2000s. The Chuck animatronic also got his cool chick attire at some point during the 2000s. In September of 2006, this location closed, and the very next month, everything would be auctioned off, from the video games to the kitty rides to even the kitchen supplies. The animatronics would be auctioned off separately. We actually have some photos of this location when stuff was being auctioned off, which shows off the decor, the games, the sky tubes, and even the animatronics from this location. The animatronics have a lot of their cosmetics taken off, likely due to the fact that they're being sold off here. We see latex pieces such as Munch's shoes and Pasquale's hands remained even after they got plastic masks, which is interesting. This isn't where the story ends with them, though. I did some digging into this specific location for a reason some of you may already know, and I think I know the journey most of these bots took. Essentially, a guy named John Cannon got a hold of at least most of the bots, though what I will say is that we have no clue what happened to Jasper, unfortunately. As for the rest of the bots, they seem to have been placed inside a haunted house somewhere in Texas after they were sold off to him. Sometime in 2023, however, Soli G bought the animatronics, which included all of the animatronics except for Jasper, since, again, we have no clue who got a hold of him after he was auctioned off. While I don't know what happened to Helen, Chuck, and Munch, I do know what happened to the Squally from this location. He popped up on eBay in late November of 2023, and after making an offer, I managed to get hold of him. Yes, the Pasquale bot I got is from this location, which is honestly pretty cool. While the Rolf I got is also cool, he wasn't ever in a location or anywhere to my knowledge. This Pasquale, however, was used in a location and went through quite the journey before he got to me. As for what I'm doing with him, I'm restoring him and also plan to have him be two characters, Duke and Pasquale. And that's why I've been referring to him as Duke slash Pasquale, because my plan is to have him be both characters, not at the same time of course. I plan on swapping between the two characters every one to two months. I may not consistently do that, but the point is, he's going to be both characters, which is not something I've heard anyone do with Pasquale before. I'm missing quite a bit, mainly cosmetically, but even if it takes time, eventually I want him to be both characters in the long run. Anyways, let's get to the final location. The 14637 Memorial Drive location, which I'll be calling the Memorial location, opened on August 26th, 1981 as a showbiz pizza place. Unfortunately, there's no info whatsoever on this location during its show's days, except for the fact, of course, that they had the Rock of Fire explosion. In 1991, this location received concept unification. By 1998, this location had received the major 90s remodel, which changed the exterior to have a cool truck logo and red awnings, add the sky tubes, and also add new decor. We can confirm this with a video taken in May of 1998, which shows off a bit of the location. We can see the 90s decor from this remodel, such as these posters and the shelves. We also got to see the animatronics. They seem to be in mostly good shape, though Jasper's legs are closer together for some reason, which makes me think they didn't work here. I can't confirm this, unfortunately, as we don't have enough footage of the animatronics to do so. We see that Chuck also got his newer latex mask design here, which makes sense. 
Nothing really happened to the store in the 2000s, except of course the addition of plastic masks and the removal of Munch Jr. and Pizza Camp during this time, I'm sure. There's a couple of photos courtesy of this guy on Discord that I was given showing a couple of pieces of decor, likely during this time. The first one shows off one of the Chuck statues, this one being Astro Chuck, which is actually pretty cool to see. The other is the clapper from this location, with the title being The Texan. We also have a couple of screenshots from Google Maps in December of 2007 that show off the 90s exterior as well as the sign outside of the location, which is cool. Again, there is not much to talk about in the 2010s, but we do have one video to go through during this time. A comedy skit filmed at this location in 2011. We get a look at what all the animatronics look like during this time, and also the exterior. Condition-wise, the animatronics aren't in too good of shape. Chuck seems to be in good shape, but everyone else isn't moving a lot, especially Helen. We also see Pasquale has cyberamic hands here, which is interesting. We can also see the exterior better here as well as a sign, which now has a venture truck on it. Interestingly, the guy pulls out a similar looking sign out from the bushes beside the location, which makes me wonder if this was a sign being used before the Avenger one. Also, on October 24th, 2012, this location closed for unknown reasons. As of January 2024, it is now multiple businesses. We also have no clue what happened to the animatronics of this location, unfortunately. In conclusion, these first round of Houston locations didn't have a ton to go over, but it's interesting how far they go back, with dates going back to June of 1981 and getting into the realm of the first 25 showbiz stores, which I think is pretty cool. Also getting to talk about the origins of where my Duke slash Pasquale came from was also pretty cool, even if the location itself didn't have much to go over. Overall, while these definitely aren't the strongest locations of Houston, they were still definitely interesting to go over, especially with Antoine Drive's story about where the bots went. Thank you guys for watching this video. This first part of the Houston area was honestly quite cool to go through, and getting to talk about Antoine Drive was also pretty cool to me, due to owning the Pasquale from that location. My next video will be continuing the history of Houston, this time going over a location that I actually find quite interesting, and has a lot in general to go over. If you're interested in seeing that, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you're notified when that drops. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.